On this Good Friday, we've got David Yonkai in the house to talk about religion and politics. And wait a minute, I thought we're never supposed to talk about religion and politics, let alone on TV, right? Well, I can't. Well, our parents used to say never talk about religion and politics, but if we had listened to everything our parents said, well, if I listened to everything our, my parents said, I'd be living in a house in Jamaica, huh? you know, and up on a hill someplace. But uh, so this happened. Sold, yes. Uh, the world traveler, I thought I'd bring that up to you, you know. So, I love that. I yeah. have not been to the Caribbean or Jamaica yet. Oh, you have to go to Jamaica. You really have to. A lot of people I know have gone down there. So let's get chatting about it. Okay. Religion, politics. Tell me about how it works out. Why it's such a polarizing topic. We hear a lot about it all the time. Why? Well, it, it used to be polarizing in in terms of how religion was actually looked at in America. Uh, you have to understand that America was actually founded as a nation of religious freedom. It's become polarized because the political process has become polarized. So the political process has made it more polarized than ever before. Here's a question I have. A religious group, certainly there's plenty of them, would they really vote mostly for one candidate? I can't see that in real life. Do you know, there used to be what they called a gap in religion, like a religious gap, because the perception was that the Republican Party had more people who were more religious. But if you take a look at the data, the data supports that with the Democratic Party, people of Jewish faith, black Afro-American Protestants and mm -hmm. Hispanic Catholics and people of unaffiliated faiths would be more likely to vote Democratic. On the, on the Republican side, evangelicals and Mormons would be more likely to vote for Republicans. But the difference between the two blocks is that the Republican block is more solid. And plus, the Republicans also have more when white you, Catholics. When you say more solid, just mean more people getting out to vote? More people getting out to vote in mass. In other words, like gotcha. the, the evangelical community will go behind a particular candidate more so than, you know, some of the other groups. Has this ever made a, a difference in a presidential election? Twice. in nineteen six. Really? Yes, twice in 1960 when John Kennedy ran for president, he was regarded as the first, you know, uh, Catholic candidate who had a chance. Uh, Catholics came up behind him. And in 2004... The, evan the evangelical community came out for George W. Bush. I didn't know that. Yes, and he was the person, and, and, and that was the group that actually put him over the top in that very yeah. close 2004 election. Yes. Right, because there was that, that literally that razor margin that we had. I, think, I remember the people, the picture of the guy looking through the ballot that was half punched out in Florida. Right. That Well, that was in two, that was 2000. This is 2004. Well said. You right. caught me on history. But, you but, caught me. But in Ohio, though, it was so close in Ohio that it almost came down to that. Really? Really? You know, yeah, Ohio was very close. That that was so, and, and the evangelical groups in Ohio actually came out, and that was the difference in that. So, so that's interesting. When we first just were chatting about it a minute or two ago, I thought, okay, this is just stack keepers putting the numbers, but it sounds like they're actually making a difference. Oh, it does make a difference in terms of how votes are, yeah. So do you think this will be something that we're going to look toward for the upcoming presidential election? I think in the next upcoming presidential election, you are going to see this play a major factor, and especially if the evangelical community gets behind a particular candidate. And in, in order to see what's happening with that, you want to look to the states of Ohio, uh, I'm sorry, Iowa, and New Hampshire to see how that those voting groups block, uh, that, that lack of voting uh, groups will vote. That's interesting. I'm sure all eyes on those two states anyway for more reasons. David Yonkai, you're from the LULAC political le uh, re uh, letter that is. Where can we get more information to keep in touch with you? It's www.lulacpoliticalletter.blogspot.com. Easy enough right there. Thanks and, so much for being with us. And for those people of faith, happy Passover, happy Easter. Yes, it's a big weekend. Big weekend. And the weather's going to be good. Thank you. As a weatherman, you're the I, man. I, I don't deserve the credit, but I'll take it. There you go.